case of social events, social efforts to get into the spirit of Christmas, Christmas joy. You know, um, <clears throat> done. You know, by shopping, partying, gift giving, and um, <clears throat> hoping that all these will give you real joy. In most countries, people don't even know what Christmas is. They still do shop. They still do party. As you do all these things, you want to get uh, much more stressed. But uh, we should be praying this evening, Lord, make, give me that joy. Make that happen so that I will be filled with the joy of Christmas. That's the lasting joy that will be in your life. Number two, light that removes darkness. That's what I read when I read, you know, John chapter 1, verse uh, 3. The light, that light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. This is the light that removes the darkness from our soul. And only Jesus has that light. We live in a broken world, ruled by darkness. A world filled with all that you can imagine now. Terrorism, violence, crime, drugs, unemployment, sickness, death, and climate change. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 describes how we struggle against all these forces of darkness. When someone receives Christ, he enters into light. About 730 years ago, before the birth of Jesus Christ, as I mentioned, Isaiah in chapter two, chapter 9 verse 2 also prophesied that the people walking in darkness will see a great light. John talks about this light only here. In John chapter 1 verse 9, he talks about Jesus as the true light that gives light to every man. In our situation today, in the midst of, you know, all that is happening around us, uh, can we still enter into this light? Sadhu Sundar Singh, we consider him a saint from India, he said once that uh, a Christian's life shouldn't be, should not be like a Christmas tree decorated, lighted, allowed to glitter for a few days and then discarded in the trash. But it should be like a fruit tree. A Christian's life should not be like a Christmas tree, but it should be rather like a fruit tree. We need to enter into the light the Son of God affords to us. People, you know, who have received the gifts that I'm just talking about, you know, uh, they have real joy. They want to Tell out of that joy, out of that joy only, you know, evangelism takes place. We pass on the message one from the other. That's what we do in our church too, when we go out on the outreach every month. You know, um, <clears throat> some people share their joy and faith in very, very challenging situations. Some of us never do that. But we are, you know, when, we, when our life is filled, when my life is filled with joy and it's overfilled, then I would naturally share, you know, with someone else. Uh, I uh, used to attend another church before with my daughter, and it was a, a huge church. And uh, during one of the harvest festivals, the woman testified, te you know, testified how she was able to uh, share the love of God in a very challenging situation. It happened just about three years ago. She was a very poor woman, single mom, just earning a living and raising children. One day when she was about to go to work, she opened the door and right in front of her there was a young guy with a gun in her hand pointing to her head. And he asked her to get into the car, her own car, and asked her to drive to the bank. And he asked her to draw money from the ATM. She drew, you know, um, uh, on the way to the ATM, she, she was telling him how poor she was. You know, trying probably to convince him, thinking that, you know, he would let her go. She was telling him how poor she was and also told him about the love of God that was in her heart. At the ATM, she withdrew $200. The guy took the money and, uh, you know, let her go. And, uh, you know, she, she, he disappeared also. But she said, the testimony she said she forgave him for what he did. This is what the love of God does. When you are filled with joy and when you are filled with happiness, this is what you need to do. Gladys Graham, you know, talked about, uh, <clears throat> you know, forgave the killers of her husband. Two sons and her husband were burned alive by Hindu fanatics, and she said she forgave him. Quite recently, 
Nelson Mandela also did that. He forgave those, although he's not a saintly person. He said, you know, he forgave those who jailed him for more than 27 years. I talked about Jesus Christ, you know, as a perfect guest. And, you know, he also brings us uh, these wonderful gifts. Lasting joy, permanent light that, that removes the darkness from your soul. And number three, permanent peace. Jesus Christ affords peace. This comes because we have peace with God. He is our peace. And therefore, when this peace rules our heart, and when this peace, you know, enters our lives, you know, even though there may be chaos that surrounds us, we can still have peace with God. Most importantly, when this peace, you know, uh, spills out of your life, it resonates in the life of your wife and children, and your family also will have permanent peace. And your marriage will enjoy God's peace. I believe firmly that the same God who designed this great big universe, the heavens and the earth, also designed my marriage and your marriage. God who leads you to restore joy and peace to your family through you. I had a famous preacher who lives in Dallas only. He said once that in a family, the husband is like a thermostat and the wife is like a thermometer. Thermostat is used to control the temperature. If you're the husband, this is what you do. You do several things. You make it hot or cold, and you make it miserable, unbearable sometimes. Wife is a thermometer. She, by looking at her face, you can see how hot is that temperature there at the home. By looking at her face, one can read how comfortable the family is. When the husband is the source of God's peace, peace like a river will rule the family. And it is true. It's absolutely true. So I have talked about, you know, briefly, I have introduced to you Jesus Christ as a perfect guest who can, gives you also these perfect gifts. I only mentioned three, um, <clears throat> three gifts. I, uh, you know, I just wonder, you know, before I close, I wanted to uh, <clears throat> tell you that you can have all these gifts. You can receive him into your heart. I did that back in 1963. The joy of Christmas is Jesus. If you have his joy, if you have Jesus in your life, then you will have a really good Christmas, a meaningful Christmas. So, we are going to bow down again. A few more seconds. And then I will pray. Maybe you can pray in your heart to Lord Jesus. Sam has been talking about you as a perfect gift who can come into my life. I invite you to come in. Give me these gifts that you talked about, Lord. Fill my life with joy. Fill my life with light. Fill my life with also the permanent peace that you can afford to your children. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for everyone who is here, children and adults. Father, we pray for all of us. This Christmas will be a meaningful Christmas because we have Christ in our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.